everyone, welcome to the Life and Student Ministry video blog for this week. Uh, we're going to do some of the same things we always do. I'm going to give away some free books here and resources from my ministry that I don't use anymore. Just send them to you. Uh, I'm going to talk about some things about uh, working with adult volunteers. First of all, let me just uh, make sure everyone knows there's no youth ministry uh, live talk this Friday. Usually there is every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. A bunch of us just get together on a big uh, um, conference call type of thing and we just talk about youth ministry. You can look at some of the past archives that I have. If you go to the top of the site, you see that little, there's a little link there. It says YM Talk. In the very, very top, you just click on that and you can listen to recordings of past conversations on all sorts of different issues and topics. This week, unfortunately, we're not going to have one. I'm going to be out in California at the National Youth Workers Convention. I'm going to be one of the live bloggers out there. And I'm going to be having a great time just keeping people updated about all the training stuff that's going on, the new ideas that are being communicated, and just everything. It's going to be, it's going to be a blast. So I'm really excited. Looking forward to that. So there will be no conversation this Friday. Uh, however, the next Friday... Chris uh, Day will be our featured guest, and he's going to be helping us uh, understand how we can work with uh, with parents who have um, who are unsaved and have kids in our youth group. You know, those community kids who sh- who show up with youth group and uh, they don't have parents who are actively involved, but they're you know maybe they're get they're starting to grow and learn more about the Lord, but their parents are just kind of far out there. So, how can we minister to the whole family and introduce the parents to Christ through their kids? And so Chris Day uh, at SerialYouthPastor.com has had a lot of experience with this. He's done it a lot, especially in his, his previous ministries that he's been involved in. So he's going he's gonna to help us with that. So that'll be in two weeks, Fridays. And uh, the, the schedule's there again. If you click on YM Talk at the top of the website here at TimSchmoyer.com. So that'll be in two weeks. I'm going to give away some free stuff here before I do. Let's talk about today's topic of what every adult volunteer needs from their youth pastor, what they need from you as a youth director, what they need from me. What do our youth leaders need from us? I'm putting together a whole blog series actually on this right now. I'll probably post maybe in like a couple weeks, two weeks, three weeks, I don't know, (laughs) whenever I get it done. Uh, So it'll be a blog series on uh, things of, you know, expectations that we need to have from leaders, what to look for in adult leaders, uh, what the kids need from the adult leaders and boundaries you need to set for your adult leaders, all those type of things. It'll be maybe like a week or week and a half blog series I'm I'm preparing. But uh, just as an introduction for that, first thing that every youth adult volunteer needs from us is one they need our structure and our leadership teams work together best when there's a coach when there's a leader who's who is keeping things structured and organized uh and kind of keeping the big picture in mind everyone has their own jobs and responsibilities like on a team you might have one person is the goalie another person is the left wing another person is the center you know uh, on a youth ministry team in our churches or our ministry organizations Everyone plays a different role, and so they kind of focus in on the details of their position, but it needs a, a leader who's going to keep structure, keep things organized for the overall direction and the overall structure of the youth ministry, and that's the role that you and I play, and that's the role that our leaders need us to play in, in, uh, in the ministry. So number one, they need structure and leadership. Number two, they also need encouragement. Everyone works best when they know that they're valued, when they know that what they're doing is significant, uh, when they feel like they're appreciated. That doesn't mean that they're all <laughs> never going to make a mistake, but just everything they do right, just encourage that and reinforce that over and over and over again. In my, in my youth ministry, I have a designated budget line item just for volunteer appreciation, and that's all that money is for, just appreciating volunteers, getting them like gift certificates, tickets to, to maybe go out to a restaurant with their spouse and just enjoy some time alone, the two of them, uh, whatever, you know, that might be. Sometimes it's just uh, gift cards to maybe a coffee shop, Starbucks, Caribou Coffee, whatever it happens to be in, in your in your area. So just r- encourage them on a regular basis, support them, even if it's just a slap on the back or if you're a guy, you do a football slap on the rear, you know, uh, just whatever, just make, keep keep them encouraged, be positive all the time. So one, structure and leadership. Two, they need your encouragement. Three, provide lots of training uh, and learning opportunities for them because the, the, the best thing you can do for your ministry is make sure your, your adult volunteers are well-equipped, they're well-trained, they're passionate, and they are so excited to, to working with these kids and reaching them for Christ and being the spiritual influence in their lives that they really desperately need. 
So train them. I know a lot of youth ministers out there don't have a budget. They don't have the financial resources to be able to go to training events. You know, like the National Youth Workers Convention is coming up next week. Uh, they can't afford to bring in other people to really train them. And I understand that. That's a big reason of why TimSchmoyer.com and Life and Student Ministry exists even in the first place because I've been in those ministries. I know how frustrating that can be sometimes to just be like, ah, I need to learn, but I need to grow, but I need someone to, to help me. And that's why we have the Youth Ministry Mentorship Program here where you can have one-on-one -on -one consultation for 10 weeks with a youth ministry veteran. Um, and uh, that's going on right now. Next round will open up in January here at Life and Student Ministry. But that's, I understand what that feels like. Uh, so that's a big reason of why we're here. But that's not an excuse for not getting training and education you need. So uh, do some things you're already obviously doing if you're watching this video. Uh, to keep up with some youth ministry blogs. There's a lot of good ones out there. Just do like a blog search uh, for some. Uh, so read some blogs, read lots of, of books, uh, and educate yourself. Uh, and a, the easiest free thing you can do to really train yourself is just sit down as a, as a group of your adult leaders and just debrief about the ministry. What's going well? What are you guys struggling with? What's you know? What can we learn from the past experiences that we've had here so far, so we know not to make those mistakes again? You know, and where to go from there. So those types of things, that's free, doesn't cost anything, and it is just so valuable. That's something that every ministry should be doing, regardless of how much money you have or how big your budget is to some, afford some of these other things. So three, provide them uh, training and learning opportunities. Number four, make sure you're communicating on a regular basis and you're always giving uh, us them support and you're always giving them direction. The communication part is just so key. Uh, players on a team, on a field, need to be talking with each other of you know where they're going or who they're passing the ball to or what's going on. Uh, you can't have a team that's unified and working together well if everyone's kind of doing their own little thing, you know? So it's good to, to make sure you're involved in those each individual areas, but come back again and, and to get the overall big picture of the ministry, which is what probably our jobs as youth pastors are supposed uh, to be. But have a, a, a direction for, for where God's taking you in your ministry. Where, where are you going? Uh, teams work toward a common goal together. So how is God moving among you and where is he taking you? Because people really commit to, to movements. They don't commit to programs. They want to know I'm part of something that's bigger than me and this is going to make an impact and I understand how it's going to happen. That's when they get excited and passionate and really rally around your ministry. So have a vision and communicate that well. Number five, ensure that they are successful. Whatever you can do as far as within your power, make sure that they succeed in their ministry. Don't set them up to be a success. Don't just kind of throw them in and hope they do okay and don't fail or flop or whatever. Uh, whatever you need to, need to do, help them transition into a new area of the ministry. Uh, equip them first. Give them plenty of ideas of things they can do for that ministry. Uh, if they're going to uh, teaching something new, uh, assign maybe a, a co-leader to kind of teach with them. Them, that they teach a couple times, then they co-teach a couple times together, then the new leader teaches by themselves like one or two times, uh, and then the, uh, then the other leader backs out completely, you know? So make sure that you set them up to be successful, meet with them, talk with them, have follow-up with them, uh, just to have those conversations. Real quick, uh, I got a lot of good stuff just piled up in my youth storage closet at church. I can give away to anyone who can use it. Again, it's first come, first serve. If you can use it, just post in the comments below, not at YouTube or Bullet TV or wherever. It has to be here at timshmoyer.com. Uh, the comments right below. And uh, these two books right here, um, they're kind of this, the this, this discipleship stuff from youth specialties. Uh, they're, they're they're both uh, they're meant for group discussion. This one's on six small group sessions on beginning life together. This one right here, and this other one is six small group sessions on fellowship. And basically, there's uh, six chapters in here. You go through it together as a group. Uh, each one has an, a, a part of a section for fellowship, for discipleship, ministry, evangelism, and worship. The five purposes you're probably familiar with from the purpose driven uh, youth ministry or whatever. And uh, then there's a section at the end that the kids can take home that week to, to do scripture reading. It's further on the subject, um, Bible memorization work, journal work, questions to reflect on. And so I think you're supposed to work through them together as a group. So if you can use one or both of these books, um, either the fellowship one or the beginning life together one, post in the comments below here. Let me know and I will gladly send it off. You can use the donate link to just Tip in a couple bucks to cover, cover shifting or sh shipping that's right there at the bottom. I'd appreciate it. God bless you guys, and I'll see you next week.